what's up everybody this is cube noob here and in this video I'm gonna be estimating the probability of each PLL uh, I saw this really cool post in this Facebook group I'm in uh, the speed cubing community where this guy had calculated mathematically the probability of each case uh, in this video I want to uh, do it just by taking a large sample and recording which case I get in each trial and I think if we take a large enough sample we should get a pretty uh, pretty good estimate uh, we got 21 cases so I'm thinking I'm gonna need to do at least a hundred solves to even get close to a decent estimate uh, I'm gonna try to do more than that though and uh, of course uh, you can see why I'm not probably ever gonna do a video on OLL on this it would just be incredibly tedious. I would probably need to do at least a few hundred solves at that point. Uh, so yeah. But anyway, I'm going to be going by uh, JPerm's PL algorithm guide. So if you're wanting to see these same cases in the exact same order, just go to uh, JPerm's PLL guide. Uh, you should be able to find that no problem if you just uh, punch in Google. And anyway, let's get into these solves. I'll be uh, using CS timer just to uh, get my scrambles, just to make sure my scrambles are totally unbiased because I mean if you're just scrambling with your fingers I mean your fingers are a little bit biased right like you tend to do the same algorithms in your scramble but all right let's get into it my data here uh, before I show you the data well, let's just look at a couple things so the mean data obviously that is always going to come out to 4.55% 100% by the 22 cases and for you experienced speed cubers saying wow those are 22 cases you got 21 PLLs plus the PLL skip uh, so I went up with a standard deviation of 2.48% so 
I looked for everything that was one standard deviation or further away from the mean. And the most substantial outlier I had was the JB perm. So that was, that occurred 11.76% of the time. So that's 2.91 standard deviations away from the mean. So how I'm interpreting that data is that, so 99.9% .9 of all data is supposed to occur within three standard deviations. So for something to occur this, as this much of an outlier with, you know, a decent sample population, uh, it's really unlikely that would occur if we had an even chance for each case to occur. If each case was the same likelihood to occur, there's really, really no way we would wind up with any case having a standard deviation this high, especially with there only being 21 cases. So JA and JB both popped up a lot. N perms did not pop up very much. Uh, NB especially did not pop up much. And H perm did not pop up much. Uh, PLL skip, unfortunately, I'm sorry if you all are going to a competition and you're looking for that PLL skip, really hoping to get it. I mean, of course, if you know COLL, I don't know, maybe you're more likely to get PLL skip. And of course, I'm sure that also skews all this data if you're doing COLL. Uh, but that was 1.6 standard deviations below the mean, so very unlikely to occur, unfortunately. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I found out here. <clears throat> Everything else, aside from these few cases, was within one standard deviation. So, basically, everything aside from these seems to have roughly the same likelihood to occur. I imagine if we took an infinite number of trials, these would probably all get really, really close to each other. And maybe JB would go down a little bit and, you know, gravitate towards JA. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's safe to say all PLLs are not created equal. Thanks for watching.